Hi there, and welcome to Calgary. My name is Tim Cornish. I'm an English as a Second Language teacher, and these are all Canadian content, with the exception, of course, of Flanders Fields. But if you're interested in more Canadian content, or if you like the Canadian content that you've gotten so far, hit that share button. Good idea. Okay, today's lesson, the prairies. Ask someone to describe the Canadian prairies today, and you're likely to get a story about waving wheat fields and flat farmland as far as the eye can see. So it comes as quite a shock to discover that Canada's three prairie provinces, Manitoba, Saskatchewan, and Alberta, were once part of the floor of an ancient sea. It's hard to imagine Canada's prairie heartland sitting at the bottom of a watery sea. But the flat, fertile prairie lands were in fact buried under oceans and glaciers for thousands of years. When the seas had drained and the ice had melted, they left behind the rich soils that today form some of the best farmland in Canada. From the Ontario border in the east to the Rocky Mountain lowlands in the west, Canada's prairie provinces are still very much the flat plains they've always been. But life on the prairies today is far different from the days when the Canadian Pacific Railway first began carrying settlers into Canada's new western frontier. At that time, central Canada was still largely populated by the various tribes of Plains Indians. For centuries, members of the Blackfoot, Blood, Cree, Sioux, Assiniboine, Ojibwa, and others had lived on the plains, hunting for buffalo, and farming. This was before the western push of immigrants forced many of the Plains Indians off their ancient lands. The push had its beginnings in Manitoba, Canada's fifth largest province and Ontario's neighbour to the west. The province gets its name from a combination of Sioux and Assiniboine words meaning prairie water. Before Manitoba was officially recognized as a province in 1870, it had for 200 years been owned entirely by the Hudson's Bay Company, as were parts of Saskatchewan and Alberta. Manitoba's capital, Winnipeg, is the fourth largest city in Canada, with a population of over 600,000 people. Saskatchewan is located between the two prairie provinces of Manitoba and Alberta. It is Canada's sixth largest province. Taking its name from the Indian word meaning swift flowing, Saskatchewan is often called the breadbasket of the world due to its endless fields of wheat. The provincial capital of Regina was once known as Wascana, an Indian word meaning pile of bones. The province is also home to cities such as with such unique Canadian names as, as Saskatoon and Moose Jaw, and don't forget Eyebrow. Alberta is known more for its rugged wilderness and vast oil fields than for hearty farmlands. Named after the daughter of Queen Victoria, Alberta is home to the famous Leduc oil fields discovered in 1947. The capital city of Edmonton is the northernmost city of its size on the continent, while Calgary was the last Canadian city to host the, the Winter Olympics. Both Alberta and Saskatchewan became provinces of Canada in 1905. For three provinces whose, whose history began at the sea bottom, the provinces of Manitoba, Saskatchewan and Alberta have certainly proved their tops on the prairies. Thanks for listening, and if you enjoy it and you want more English as a Second Language lessons, please hit that share button. Thank you.